Hey everybody, welcome back. Marcus Graves back again. Oh my gosh, it's been a while dealing with some computer issues. And to be honest, I'm still kind of dealing with some computer issues, but it's up running well enough again so that I can uh, get back on my consistency like it was before. And what can I say? I am excited to get back into the swing of things, to get back to making some content for y'all, to get back to interacting with y'all, all that good stuff. But I do want to give you guys the heads up. I'm back up and running, but there are some, there's still some kinks and some ironing that needs to be done with getting my computer completely and utterly like good. So if something is to happen again and I disappear for a few days, know that once again, it's me dealing with these issues. You know, I'll keep you guys updated. I'll let you know what's going on. But right now, right now, we got to get back into things. They don't even believe me about you. You believe me, don't you, Abigail? Okay. We're back. <laughs> Most folks don't know what happens to eyeballs in a fire. Like runny eggs on on black skin. Mm. So I grabbed this knitting needle, you know, and all I could think about was how to... Oh, how to fuck. Did he do that to himself? I leaned on my habit to get rid of that face, and my habit made sure that I never would. Wow. I'm having a total deja vu right now, sitting and reading chairs that face each other. Smaller ones for uh, two. No, no, three. Is this deja vu or is this Kids uh books are on the lower shelf so even a little boy with a wheelchair can reach his favorites? Wow. That got really specific. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Indeed it did. Claims is about us. And this is the night that Seriously, Ellie what's uh wrong? Ellie fuck. Nellie died. Now <laughs> I've said it every single episode. This kid is freaking cute. Every time I see him, all I can I've think is, so oh. Oh, There's something else up there. You're scared. I can tell. How? It's a twin it's thing. I'm scared. I was right. There's nothing. It was probably just Theo messing around. Sounds like the kid almost forgot his line for a second. Oh crap. That was a good transit. I didn't even didn't even notice that. I realized that's the point, but you know. <laughs> Usually animals in these stories can sense the presence of other things. I wonder if it's because it's hanging around him that it's barking. So not at the specter itself, that derby fella, but uh, because it's hanging on him. You ain't walking, nigga. What you need the cane for? <laughs> I'm just here to make sure everybody's okay. Fuck this house. And I'm sorry, but is Amir, did the kid sound like a velociraptor? <laughs> Not making fun. I probably would have reached a pitch higher than that. I'm just saying. <laughs> you okay? I slept on it funny last night. I told you not to follow me. Why did you? Um, if I can get you a motel. Can you get money? 
sister, so your brother. And this is why he raids Stevens, not for drugs, but to help. You're considerably smaller than you were when he was a kid. So is this your first rehab, Joey? Uh, it's far from it. Some of us are addicted to treatment centers, huh? Not Luke's first rodeo either. So what's different this time? Something. Have you ever seen someone in the draw, Steve? They're freezing all the time. LA in July, no air conditioning, freezing. Muscle aches, stiff as boards, nausea, shakes. I'm not asking for her hand in marriage. I just wanted to bring a friend to dinner and you're not even giving her a chance. No, I guess I'm not. Why not? I'm fresh out of those. I gave them all to you. I just want you to be careful is all. I want to say that Steve's acting like a dick, which he kind of is, but I also understand. a good person, just because you care about them, doesn't mean they won't burn you. You're a good person, Luke. Jesus, Steve, it's fucking freezing in here. Because Nelly's already there. Hey! I, I, oh, God, I saw him walking in, and I thought we were fucked. It's all good. Chill. She's gonna fuck him over. Yeah, almost. That's a few more blocks. I want a clean hotel, no junkies on the sidewalk. Man, I don't know if I'm gonna make another couple blocks to that place. I'll just um just pop into the little junkies room and be back in a minute. Come on, let's let's keep let's keep going. She fucked him. And of course it's showing you the different perspective as you realize that he is actually Joey! trying to get his shit together. Now I thought there were two things of foreshadowing in that in the blind gentleman's uh, story earlier. One being that the habit doesn't stop anything, it actually just continues your suffering in one way, shape, or form. But also, that trauma can cause you to slip back into it. As I got older, but um, I didn't. I am. Um, my Come mom. Come on, man. Uh, you need seven, and you set them up like this. Why seven? Mom, That's for family. Dad. Yeah. And I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so cold. I did. My, my, my arms and legs are just so, so stiff. Uh, fortunately, it's it just, mimics um, it's, it's, withdrawal. It's, now it's dead. His seven was broken before. Irreparably now. Hell, it was suicide. Everything keeps breaking down around him. Yeah. Breaking his hope. It wasn't. Mm. So it seems like the one particular, anyway, overarching theme for this episode is breaking. The breaking of resolve. The breaking of your um, mental stability. Breaking of hope. And like all these episodes have done, uh, since the first episode, uh, taking characters that were conveyed through the perspective of Steve, we see the perspective shift into what's actually going on with these, well, with these people. And they've, and they've been doing that so far. It's Steven's episode was the first, then Shirley's, uh, Theo, Luke. I wouldn't believe that we would get one of Nell. However, I do know there's an episode called The Bent Neck Lady, which I believe is the next episode, so maybe we will. But you know what? We're, there's still a lot of things from her perspective that we don't know. And the only thing I can speculate is if that episode that's called The Bent Neck Lady, I'm assuming, I believe it is episode five. The only reason I know that is because when pulling up the episodes for Netflix, I know I saw that uh, as I was getting to Theo's episode or maybe this episode, so I'm sure it's four, uh, five or six. If that's Nell's episode, you've gone through all five children now, gaining their perspectives and kind of making this collage into what the truth, or at least to get closer to what the truth actually is, that from there, the only thing that can happen is you're at a breakneck pace about being hit with, once again, going back to Steven's thing in the first episode, the hard reality, the, the harsh reality. No, these aren't withdrawals. No, this isn't deja vu. We see that this house is particularly a wellspring of, uh, of specters. The bent neck lady, the derby bowler, whatever the hell is it? Derby bowler? Something? Uh, that apparition, um, 
this older woman looking for Clara. It is just teeming with spirits. Why? Why is this place a, a, a nexus? And I was thinking that's the, you know, uh, you know, you had the foreshadowing of the blind gentleman and his story uh, with Luke's journey during this episode. But you also had Luke's drawing of himself and Nell as they're the ones that, I mean, it's a twin thing. As they are the most connected out of all the siblings because they are twins, they're most connected to each other. But also the seven, counting the seven, the seven buttons, the seven soldiers and everything, that that's the family. And that Luke is searching for home. Luke is searching for togetherness. Luke is searching for uh, unity. This is the way that they're going to break whatever's happening, is together. And as cliched, possibly, as that may be, or some may uh, call it, it is a theme that has been conveyed throughout this series up to this point. They were tight. Tragedy struck. They break. The breaking of stability, the breaking of hope, the breaking of optimism. Nell dies. They could break further. Luke is an addict. They break further. And even though Nell's dead now, perhaps there is still some way that she can be active with them. If every, shit, if everything else is active around them, fuck, Nell can be active too. And the mother. <laughs> so that all seven can come together to defeat whatever is happening. Or to, if not defeat, certainly to overcome whatever is happening. And clever use of cold. Uh, by that I mean, you know, you, there, there, you know, you always hear in paranormal stories about, uh, wherever spirits are there, you know, it becomes cold, the temperature drops. Okay, you kind of have to wonder, it's ambiguous, ambiguous, can, purposeful, ambiguous conveyance to show, is this all in their mind? Is there something wrong with this family? Or, is there something wrong with this house? Uh, this particular episode took the whole withdrawal and feeling of cold and everything. He's like, I'm cold, I'm shivering, but I'm not going through withdrawal. I, I, you, you believe me, right? I promise I didn't do anything. Um, but they, but it shows how these uh, specters are like a habit. They're always over your shoulder. They're always following you. They're always in your face. You try to get away from it. You try to you try to do something to circumvent it, or or, or or to cut it out, or to do anything. But it's always there, and it's always following. It's always hounding. So even even going back to like I said in the reaction, that dog that barked at him, it's not barking at the specter. It's barking at him. No, this is your habit. This is your issue. This is your demon. <laughs> I'm still at this moment ruminating over the conveyance of the, the, the bowler ghost becoming the mom. I mentioned that it was different before. This, the one that he saw when he was a child was much longer, taller, ganglier. And of course it becomes his mother at the, uh, at the end. What's the conveyance of that? Possibly the same thing like as the apparition hangs over him, his mother's death hangs over him as well. Even going to the lines of, you know, you can come home or something to that effect. Is it a conveyance of how tied she is with those specters there? Particularly because she died in that home. That she has a tie with those specters just like, uh, just because she is now part of them, really. Well, we see that with Nell. Those are possible conveyances. I'm not saying this is what, that's what is being conveyed, but, you know, like I said, ruminating. Alright guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this reaction. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you're so inclined. Check out my channel for all my other content that I have on there, reactions, breakdowns, all that good stuff that's on there. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.